And on time, we're live right at 11 a.m., like I said. Welcome. Let me just check my replay real quick. Live right at 11 a.m., like I said. Woo! Welcome. Let me just check my replay real quick. Live. Perfect. Um, so, uh, welcome, everybody. Perfect. Oh, I should um, probably. So, oh, uh, sorry. Welcome, sorry. everybody. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> doing a little echo there. Uh, yeah, dude. So we're out here, um, doing a stream. I should probably change the screen. Let's see. What do we got going on here? Oh my goodness. I don't like that at all. Much better. Much better. We'll get rid of Sonic. I forgot. This is, <laughs> this is the setup from my stream on, um, Thursday night. That's the last time I streamed. I forgot. Sonic's going to go away for this stream. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you what, I just kind of wanted to make this because, what's up, Maxi? Maxi in the house. So, you know, there's this synthesizer. Oh, by the way, Chris, you're going to want to skip this one. I won't be offended. Hit the like button. Appreciate it, Uncle Chris, but you will not care about this. It, aren't I nice for saving you time, right? I save you time so you don't have to go through this whole thing. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, you know, Dave Smith, RIP, uh, the king. The father of MIDI, the reason why I make music at all, passed away uh, this year. Pretty crazy, unexpectedly. And, uh, you know, his last synth that he was working on was called the Trigon 6. Now, I'm just going to say right now, not a great name. Here's why. Because there is a comic book character from DC Comics. Uh, by the way, guys, I'm, I'm all sorts of fucked up. I apologize. I'm I got a sinus infection. I'm not sleeping. For some reason my titty hurts really bad today. When I breathe it hurts. That's chill. It's probably a heart attack. Anyway, um but so uh there's a DC Comics villain named Trigon. He is the father of Raven from Teen Titans. He's a demon. He's a big giant demon, right? Uh we all know Trigon, right? Um let's see here. He's like as tall as a tower, massive fella. Let me fix the screen here. Uh, is that Cunio? What's that? Oh, is the chat working? Whoa. Adamaski A. I watch music. Welcome says, oh, "What's up, Cunio? What's up, Maxi? What's up, Adamaski?" Um, I watched music. Track sounded good. I didn't say wow. Yeah, we're going to start actually with a different video instead of that. We're going to do Mike Pen. You guys know Mike Pensini. Hey, guys, it's me, Mike Pensini. Uh, really cool guy. But, yeah, so so Trigon is a, is a fucking comic book character. I don't know. It, I, I feel like they could have picked a different name. Um, it's a bit it's a bit nerdy. It just sound, it doesn't sound cool. Uh, yeah, you got the Trigon, eh? <laughs> it doesn't sound cool at all. Also, let's see. Does it work? I got the Nord too. I got. I, I just turn it on for these streams. Why not? Does that? Can you even hear that? You can't. Oh, because I turned it down. Yeah. Hey, hey. Okay. Uh, I just found that there's a trigger button on the Nord. When you press it, it plays a sound. Okay. But anyway, so we're we're gonna initially when I heard this synth, I was uh, I was kind of like I was kind of like eh. Because I owned a Prophet 6, and the sounds that I were hearing were very Prophet 6-esque. And it's like, I love the Prophet 6, but this, to me, didn't sound that different from the Prophet 6. So I was, I was just kind of like, really? And then I saw the price tag, and I still have a problem with the price tag, still. Um, it also has six voices. It's not multi-timbral. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's a pretty limited synth. And I'm just like, damn, dude. Like, really? You know? 3500 bucks for a six-voice. Granted, three oscillators. I don't know. And what I had heard, I didn't find that impressive. I didn't find the, the patches that were being played to be that interesting. Which goes to show you that if you're a marketing team for a company, you got to hire guys who really know, first of all, how to play. So not me. <laughs> and two, know how to get the funk out of out of these patches. And that's so important to have the right people 
demonstrating your your musical instrument because if you just kind of have these guys who just sort of do like filter sweeps and noise and blippy bloopy arpeggios that's not really going to show me you know like that's that's good if you want to if you want to impress the stranger things you know crowd or something but for real musicians they want to know what first of all does this thing warrant the price tag you know uh, this is more expensive than since that outclass it by a mile. You know, the, the Novation Summit is, what, 1800 maybe 2000 I could be wrong there. Um, the, uh, even the Juno X, which I hate, is 2000 bucks. you know. Um, I shouldn't have even mentioned the Juno X. It's bad karma. <laughs> it's bad juju. Um, and, and, and also, and I'm not to keep talking about Nord. I, I mentioned them way too much. But I still think the deal that you get on these Nord, you get four synths in one, you get all this polyphony, you get all these parts. That is, you know, that is such a good deal that it's like when I see something with these very unimpressive specs, I'm just like, really? But I'm going to backpedal my thoughts a little bit because, first of all, with my man Mike, he gets some great sounds out of this thing. Then we're also going to watch music track. We might watch some other stuff, but... Anyway, let's check this out. Tini here, super excited today. I'm trying out the Trigon 6 from Sequential for the very first time. Haven't played it, haven't laid eyes on it. Let's go check it out. It's six, three, oops. Ignore, this is just his intro. Um, it's six VCOs per voice. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, no, it's three. It's three VCOs per voice, right? I could be wrong. Um, if you know your, if you give your dad or your nan a drill, you will know who really owns that tool. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Interesting way to put it. Oh. Okay. Right off the bat, you know. This sounds very mogi to me. Maybe not as much low end as I was expecting, but like that sounds like a memory moog. Not exactly, and I don't own a memory moog, but I've heard them before. That sounds pretty fat. And notice he's not putting reverb, he's not putting delay, just the dry patch. That goes a long way for me, you know? Show me what it actually sounds like. Um, yeah. Also, I, you know what? Sorry to keep stopping. I'm going to keep doing that. But I keep noticing Synthpunk is talking about the blonde end cheeks, you know, like the wood here. Um, I don't give a fuck. I mean, really, like, it looks fine. It does not look bad to me. I don't know. It makes it stand out a little bit, which I like. So this patch I'm not super into, but it's just showing what it can do. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm going to say this. I don't think they really updated the effects section on this thing. I think it's the same effects as the 6, Prophet 6, OB6. And, you know, I got to be honest with you guys. I barely use those effects at all. I think the only ones I would really mess with were maybe the phaser. And chorus was okay, but honestly, not that, you know... Whatever. I don't, I, I don't care about the effects that much. They have a sort of plasticky sound to them. I think if you're going to use this synth, just forget about the forget about the effects and just you have a memory moog. 
You know, that's basically what it is. With some other inspirations as well. I think they also have some inspirations from some Roland in there. I don't know. Uh, Mike always harnesses beautiful sounds from the synth. Yes. I first saw him when the SEO 2 came out. Yeah. This dude and Matt Johnson are magic on the keys. Not forgetting Moot Buxel. Yes. Yes. Okay, right here. Mm. Oh. Yeah, right? Does sound good. How you doing, Maxie? You alright? And the reason why I'm actually considering getting this, to be honest with you, is I've never really had a Moog product. I've had a I had a what do you call it? Uh Behringer uh Bogue. Um, you know, for like a couple months and I was like, this is okay. I sold it pretty fast though. Because the interface kind of sucked. It was very small. But, I mean, there, it's a good sound to have in your palette, and this way you also get to play chords, you know? Now, it's not going to sound like a mini Moog, probably, but, I mean, you could probably get some really fat basses out of this thing. Nice. Commissions? Okay. Now this kind of sound is fat, dude. And the keyboard does have aftertouch, which is good, you know? Now, I will say this, I, I still hear the cleanness of the Prophet 6 in there. I'm sure you can distort this thing to make it sound pretty fat. But, um, but yeah, I still hear the sort of clean sheen uh, from the, I mean, the Prophet 6, OB6, they both have this kind of clean sound, which is to be honest, is like what they would have wanted it to sound like in the 80s, you know? Like, that's the thing. Like, we like vintage stuff because it's imperfect and it doesn't sound, you know, pristine. And that's part of what gives it the charm. But, you know, the guys who were creating these things, engineering this stuff, they didn't want it to be... <laughs> they didn't want the VCA to distort, you know, or tuning to go out of drift. You know what I mean? They wanted it to be... Perfect. And that's why Roland, pretty much after the Alpha Juno, just stopped making analog. Because they're like, yeah, we've got this down. We never have to worry about tuning again. We never have to worry about any of that stuff again. So, but but I do think that, unlike Roland, this synth and these synths that they, they're making, these new modern analog poly synths, do, they, they have a, they, they sound good. They sound good. Is this going to sound like... If you were to compare this to a memory Moog, I'm sure the memory Moog would beat it in terms of in terms of character, probably. But I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's interesting. It's just I don't know. Mark Pensini. Let's see, we got MIDI through, out, in, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name. It's pronounced Adamski. Adamski, Adamski. Dude, I, I had a, a Jarski, which is Georgian cheese bread. I started eating that a couple months ago. 
It's so good. Anyway, says, uh, here's my question. What makes this different from the uh, other sequentials, say the Prophet 6, 5, and the 12? Well, it's all the filter and, and the oscillators, right? The, the ladder filter and the fact that you have three, you know, Moog-style oscillators. That's, ooh, sorry. Stomach just really hurt. Um, <laughs> I'm all fucked up today, dude. Um, that I think mean, that that's the whole point of the synth. I don't think it, uh, as far as LFOs and stuff, it, it's not going to outclass anything. That's the thing. You're like you're paying for a memory Moog, right? That's that's what you're paying for. Um, it's like a Polyphonic Pro Three. No, it's like a Polyphonic. Well, it's going because you know. Okay, so I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong. The Prophet series, they use Curtis chip filters, um, and the OB6 also might use Curtis. I don't know. But this is based off of Moog ladder filter type filter. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it, that's, that's, what you're, what's, that's what they're going for. Now, I do wish they made some design choices that make it look a little different. Like, this color, I don't care about the end cheeks so much. Welcome, synth artist. Um... This color really reminds me of the Prophet Sit. I mean, it doesn't look that different. You know, it really doesn't look that different. Um, they could have given it a something a bit more bold to make it stand out. I, I don't know why they just decided on this muted dark bluish black. I don't know. Welcome, Synth Artist 69. Do you make a lot of videos, right? Doesn't Synth Artist make a lot of videos? Am I making that up? Synth Artist 69. I swear. Yeah, yeah, I've seen your videos. Cool. Have you been here before? I apologize. I, I'm all over the place. Yeah, dude, your Poly 61. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know your videos. Oh no, you know what I know you from? The mod, your Mod X videos. Because before I bought the Mod X, I watched all of your preset. <laughs> dude, that was helpful. Dude, he has. Look at this. This guy in the chat has a hundred videos on every preset pretty much on the mod x mod x excuse me here we go i watched this all fm pianos i bet i commented on this too let's see did i comment on it no okay that's funny oh you're here cool welcome <sighs> um he does this since 1863 yeah oh you're right okay ob6 has discrete OTA filled. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Aren't they supposed to be kind of SEM style or something? I forget. I'll be. I'm not. I'm not the biggest uh, uh, component guy. But um, all I know is that yeah. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a Pro Three. This is really their their mini their memory Moog clone clone. I will say something actually on the subject of Behringer. You know, again. They took way too long on the Profit 800. Couldn't they have waited until the start of the new year to announce a sequential clone out of respect, maybe, for Dave? Like, the year is almost over, you know? Couldn't you, like, wait a couple more months or just a month? I don't know. That's it's kind of a shitty move. Um, you enjoy my channel as well. Thank you. You know, I'll be honest with you, my content's kind of these days is kind of bleh. I'm more on, on Twitch, honestly. Um, but I, I want to get back into creating this, this, um, what do you call it? This Nord. I love this thing. So I'm going to start making more music with this, but thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let's hear more of this. Okay, this is pretty fat. Although, is this using the distortion? Dude, that's the my one major complaint about the Prophet 6 was the analog distortion. Really bad. I mean, it it did not sound good. It it sounded if you just wanted to put like a distorted muffle over your sound. <laughs> 
There you go. It, it, I never used it. Never. Straight shooter. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to get an endorsement deal from anybody. Uh, I, yeah, I just want to, I'll be real. I'll be real. And sometimes my opinions are misinformed and sometimes they're kind of dumb, but <laughs> fuck it. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that sound. I'll be I'll be real with you. Yeah. Oh, you watched this video already? Yeah, dude. Amazing. Woo! You should have done overdrive, yeah, instead of distortion, yeah. Behringer likes to be controversial, says Adamski. Think about it. We live in a world of social media attention seeking. The more controversial, the more it fuels their market. Yeah. I mean, no one really gave them shit for announcing that. It was, it's just kind of like, it was one of your rivals, one of your competitors. Couldn't you give them a little, I don't know. I guess, I guess it would have been worse if they had announced it the day after he died. By the way, <laughs> yeah, that would have been terrible. I'll give them that. They waited at least till the end of the year, but... But here's something I kind of wish they... I wish they didn't have Polymod and instead had something else on this to... Well, I don't know. Maybe Polymod on a, on a three-oscillator synth would sound pretty cool. But... Because, again, like, the Prophet 6 has Polymod, you know? I, w I would just kind of want another LFO, you know? I don't know why... These synths are so limited, you know? Um... You're paying for the sound. You're paying for the oscillators. I guess. I don't know. See that? You could not get that sound. <laughs> oh, man. You couldn't get that sound on a Prophet 6. No way. got behind him he's got a super six he's got is that a moog uh grandmother i think behind him he's got some modular setup and i don't know what this is so okay so we kind of get it yeah, like that's you know it is what it is. Cool. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, this warmed me up. And then I started watching, but I haven't finished the music track video. Uh, you know, everyone here knows music track JP. This guy is the reason I got into hardware since. His Alpha Juno 2 video sold me like that. And um, yeah, man, that's, it's like, he's so good. He's so good. And he's not, he's never critical which is kind of disappointing, but at the same time, I guess it's, I think it's because the reason why he's not critical is because music track is a website where you can buy synths, I think, or you can buy gear. It's sort of like a, their own little reverb. I could be wrong, but I remember looking it up. Like I was wondering why is he so, why is he so positive all the time? Cause he never has a bad thing to never. Here, what's this? Fukusan. No, this is not music track. I'm not sure. I remember doing some investigating. But anyway, um, so, so he never has anything critical to say. But, and he also does, he's done a lot of uh, sound design work for companies like Yamaha. Like, he's worked for everybody. So, maybe that's part of it too. 
So you're not going to get a, a, like a straight shooter type of vibe from this video, I'm sure. But uh, sounds great. He's an amazing player. Mr. Gladick, Sadik. What's up, dude? I mean... And that's a song. What is this song? Dun, 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 dun. It's just like every ending to an anime. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have, dude, Japanese synth guys have the jazziest chord progressions. Like R&B jazz, you know? Like it's, ah, oh, so dope. I can hear George Benson on this or something. See, now, I, I, but I will say that delay, I don't know what it is, dude, but it, it makes them sound, it makes it sound worse. You know, it makes it sound extra plastic. I don't know. I don't know who developed the effects for these sequential products. I wonder if it's the same effects in the Rev 2. I haven't really tried the Rev 2, but yeah, that, that delay does it no favors. Um, no, you won't from music track. He would brag about a Venom synth or a Viscount OB12. Two of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. He always has something positive to say. Uh, the first sound is quite a bread and butter sound IMO where the magic happens is when you hear the likes of the OBX8 and that pan spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, totally. No, no, the first sound is not that crazy, but how he's playing it is bringing the magic out of it, in my opinion. Um, fuck. I'm going to take an Advil or something. Let's skip ahead because I saw one part where he uh, he's doing the um, he's adjusting the envelope, showing how snappy they are. Welcome, JS Bach. Still happy with my profit six? Yeah, no, I I got you. I I wish I never sold mine to be honest. And I never had tuning issues. Did you ever have tuning issues? I never did. Yeah. Oh, oh, watch it. He might filter. Okay. Those cores are crazy. That's so funny to me. Watch that again. <laughs> Dude, he's so he's so pure. He's so wholesome. Music check JP. His name is Katsunori Yuji. Da, 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 da. <laughs> but he's right. That's what it sounds like. This is very Japanese, and it's very funny to me. 
Yo, I am a big fan of Shook, dude. I was listening to Shook since like 2013. Yeah, Shook is amazing. Jasper. I covered one of his songs on this channel, but uh, I don't think he liked it. <laughs> Yeah, pow. Now, wait a second. I have a question. I see pulse width on every oscillator here. Is that just for the pulse or is that... I mean, well, you mean for the square? Like, I, I would like more sense to have... Give me PWM on every waveform, right? Wouldn't that be sick? Like Sawtooth PWM? And let's see, aftertouch goes to frequency one, two, three, filter, amp, LFO. Oh, that's good. that's new. FX mix A and B. I don't think the Prophet 6 has that. I could be wrong. No, that's new. I like that JP6 multiple waveform type switchability. Oh, what's what do you mean by that? Wait, Jupiter six. I'm not that familiar with the with the six layout. Uh, let me see. You can here. We'll look at the stupid plugin version. Or there isn't a plugin version. Oh, this is actually the synth. Oh, cool. I just want to see what you mean. Do you mean that you can have, oh, dude, come on, man. That's all I want to see. Open him. That's all I wanted. Okay. Oh, do you mean you can, you can select, oh, like saw and sign. Oh, that's kind of cool. Wow. Uh, I'm surprised they haven't done a plug-in Jupiter 6. No company has. Wait, has Roland? I don't think so. Wait, Jupiter 6 VST. <sighs> Let's see. No, there's a crappy emulation of it, but... Yeah, they have... Dude, Roland has not released... Really? That's kind of surprising. Maybe it wasn't a big hit, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I think it's about time they... they milk this why not you know why the hell not um yeah dude i i actually got to play a jupiter 6 at nam 2020 a couple months before the pandemic became real and i didn't quite get, i didn't spend a lot of time on it because i didn't want to a be the first person who breaks a jupiter 6 <laughs> i don't know i was just kind of paranoid um, it was, at, it was over at the reverb booth. So, you know, that guy, Justin delay from reverb, he used to do videos. I talked to him, talked to him about it. Uh, we were talking for like, I don't know, 10 minutes, but, uh, it's a big fucking thing. Huge. Uh, those synths back then were just massive, all metal, you know, built like a tank. Yeah, man. There's some limitations on the synth. I know. Well, it's only six voices compared to eight. Um, but it does have MIDI. What, there's some other limitations too. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, let's go back to the video. Actually, I gotta use the bathroom real quick. Sorry, guys. Let me uh, here. I'll I'll just keep this going for a little bit, and I'll be right back. Uji, Trigon Six. Man, すごいですよこれは。
びっくりです49件のキーボードともう重厚なサウンドすごい見てくださいオシレーター1233つオシレーターがいますねはいで,で大きなポイントは3つのオシレーターとこのフィルターなんですよねフィルターがですねこのもう素晴らしいこの分厚いフィルターですよ。で、スダンスを上げるとね、こんな感じになりますけど、これはね、ラダーフィルター。このラダーフィルターってのはね、えー、皆さんよく知ってます、知ってると思いますよ。モーグで使ってるラダーフィルターですね。ノーパスフィルターのね。うん、でね、3つオシレーターがあって、ポリフォニックで、ポリフォニックで、ラダーフィルターを使ってるとなんかね、これもうまさに、もうミュージックトラックだから言ってしまいますけど、これはね、メモリーモーグですよ、メモリーモーグ。ね、えー、ミニモーグのオシレーターが3つあって、ポリフォニックになって、で、ラダーフィルターがついてる。分厚いサウンドでこのシーケンシャルってプロフェット完全再現しましたねでオーバーハイム完全再現しましたね OBX8 そして、えー、残るもう一つやっぱりこのね3オシレーターとラダーフィルターのこれで3つのもうヴィンテージのシンセサイザーのもう3つは完全にこれであのシーケンシャルは網羅した、まあ、そういうこともあって今回トライゴンってトリってこう3つって言うんですけど、えー、そういうネーミングになったで6が示す通りこれは録音ポリです、えー、と左手でルートオクターブ押さえて4つ押さえても録音と。プロフェットファイブだとね、五音なんで、こう、四音を抑えると、えー、左手はね、一音しか使えなかったんだけど。今回は。中古にこう。いけるというね。すごいです。やっぱりこう。この手のと。まあ、切れがいいでしょあ、これ、ちなみに、エフェクターも入ってます。こう出すとディレイがあるというけどちょっと切るねこうなしでももうベクター出しても非常に良いねこのフィルターの良さでねデスナンスを入れるとちょっとローがなくなる感じでデスナンス切るとローがあるものすごい出てちょっと入れていくとどうがねなくなってくるもうまさにミニモーグ典型的なこのねモーグのラダーフィルターの特性がねこのフィルターのキレが素晴らしいこのパチパチいう感じそこからでレズナンスキルとローがものすごい出てちょっと入れていくとローがねなくなってくる。もう That sounds great. That sounds really great. I mean, just that, hear that resonance. まさにミニモーグ、典型的なこのね、モーグのラダーフィルターの特性がね、このフィルターのキレが素晴らしい。Yeah, yeah, you hear that? パチパチいう感じ。そこから。I like how snappy the envelopes are. They're very snappy.、Um...
Uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, so I don't know. This thing, it just sounds... It sounds like you have to... A, you have to not go too crazy with the effects, in my opinion. That's just, you know... Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It might, it might be worth getting in the future, but again, I just wish there was a price drop or something. I don't know. I feel, I feel like it's, it's cause you know, for some people, well, it's funny. Like I, I posted on online talking about the Nord and how I was like, it's only 700. And then some people are like, dude, that's a lot of money. And I'm like, ah. To you, it is because you're not a synth person. You know what I mean? Like, to you, that sounds, like, insane. But when you have bought enough of them, you know, then you realize, oh, that's actually... And what you have to think about what you're getting. Like, I wouldn't pay 700 for a micro Korg. You know? <laughs> like, no. But I would for a Nord. Um, how much is it? Uh, it's 3500 Yep. And that's not including tax. Probably more like 36 uh, with taxes. Yeah, so it's not cheap. I mean, it's it's a quite a bit more expensive than the Profit. I think the Profit 6 keyboard is like, what, 2600 It's like, Jesus Christ, extra $1,000 more. Um, so, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a sizable amount of money. It's also more expensive than the OB6, right? How much is the OB6? <sighs> um oh okay i'm seeing them for actually about the same cost ob6 is 34.99 damn that's crazy dude that's fucking nuts i mean that's not that much well how much is the new obx8 i think it's 5k okay that's quite a bit more yeah y you have to you have to think about like for something like that, you you have to think about, okay, am I really going to use this a lot? You know, is, is, is this going to be a purchase that will actually benefit my music? And I, I actually don't think that's why they make them so expensive. I think, I remember hearing Nick Bat talk about this, that there's lots of people like doctors and lawyers who also like synths on the side and they have all this disposable income, which is why they'll they'll cop a profit for, you know, 5K or whatever. You know what I mean? Like all that stuff. Um, and it's not, re they don't really care about the, how many features it has. They're, they're paying for, ooh, analog, or ooh, it's like the old synths, you know. But me, from a budget standpoint, I'm just like, God damn, bro. You know? Um... That's, yeah, yeah, without a second thought. Just, oh, yeah, that sounds good. I'll buy that. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I won't say I'm dirt poor, but I'm definitely not balling, you know. I have to carefully consider what I purchase. Unless it's booze, and then I just, you know, whatever. Uh, but, um, <laughs> like, yeah. I think, yeah, I think if you're on a budget and, like, to be honest... I guess it does make sense because like a Rev 2 is way more capable than this and um, is cheaper, you know, and maybe they're like, okay, we'll make the Rev 2 for a producer, a serious producer who's trying to make music or whatever. And then we'll make these as like our luxury, like relaxed synths. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but it's so it's I'm conflicted because it does sound good and I'm sure you can get some really good sounds out of it. But that price tag, man. Great chords. Excellent chords. Yeah, flagship versus studio work exactly. Now, I also wonder if Novation's synths are going to get more expensive. Because, you know, Novation and Sequential merged, what was that, like five months ago or something? So they were, I guess, bought out by Novation. 
you know? So I wonder if that's going to make, you know, the Summit 3 or whatever they, they make now will be more pricey. Probably not. They'll probably keep those decently priced. And then, you know, sequential is the expensive um, thing. And, you know, to be honest, I'm glad that they did buy out sequential because, you know, after Dave passed away, who would have who would have managed that company, you know? Like, it's it's good to have someone big like that who, I think people mostly like Novation products, from what I can tell. They're not, like, they're, they're pretty creative. They're not like Roland where they're just like, fuck you, we'll do whatever we want. We don't care about the customer, right? Um, but they're also not like a loser company where they have no idea what they're doing. Like, like the Summit is... One of my coworkers has a summit and he says it's like his favorite synth ever he's ever had. He loves it. He loves the flexibility of the oscillators. You know, he loves the the filter, the by Tim reality or whatever. He loves it. So, um, you know, it's like Yeah, it, it, that's a good company to merge with. If 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 Roland had bought sequential, bruh. Behringer, ooh, that's a dark, that's a dark future. <laughs> Behringer buys sequential. Ugh, that would never happen. They actually have the most beef now that I think about it. Because I remember one of the lawsuits was, yeah, ew. <laughs> one of the lawsuits was because there were some sequential forums or Dave Smith forums and people were talking shit about Behringer on there, and they tried to sue over that. It's like, dude, it's a forum. Chill the fuck out. There were actually lawsuits involved. I don't know if they went anywhere, but yeah. So we're, we should be grateful that some of the nice British fellows over at Novation um, stepped up and did that. Because now, now it, they will live on. You know what I mean? With a company like that, you know, backing you, you'll actually have some longevity. If if he had passed away and there was no one else there to support the that brand, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, but I just I hope that they uh, they remain separate in a way. You know, like I don't know. It's 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 tricky uh, to rock around to rock around all night. That's right. It's tricky. Uh, okay, let's hear more of this. ヒートでね。もうバルシバシ来る感じ。これはすごいですね。でね、あの、プロフェットファイブで、え、培ったこの。そう、アンアンラッピングアキャンディケイン。That's what I'm Oh, there's a sequencer, too. Whoa. Oh. This candy cane, bro, it's so hard to unwrap. I've never had to do this before. It's like taking a condom off of a very, very skinny penis. <laughs> it's this is ridiculous. And it's also the same color as the candy cane. I'm sorry, guys. I'm ready. I'm gonna put it down. Put the candy cane down. Lower the candy cane, sir. He's in Rick Wakeman mode. Yeah. Mm. So this is a basic sound, but I like these basic sounds because they kind of show you the raw sound of the synth. Whoa. 
See, this is very Prophet 6 s There is some overlap for sure. There's, I, I think if you have a Prophet 6, if you don't have one of those and you get this, you'll be good. If you have both, there is going to be some Prophet 6. Should have put the candy cane in the fridge. The wrappers are a bloody nuisance. Why? What does the fridge do? It makes it easier to... Oh, shit. To, uh... Whatever. Fuck, dude. I'm sorry. Uh, this is so... This is... I feel like... Oh, you got some movement. Um, I don't know. Oh, now it's getting dirty. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Why did I do that? It just shattered into a million pieces. Why did I just do that? My floor was so clean. God damn it. All right. Anyway, I'll clean that up later. <laughs> Fuck. You know what I've, I've learned in this stream? Fuck candy canes. There we go. Uh, let's see here. So, I don't know. Now, I also want to talk about Synth Punk because he... I think we get... This is a long video. Damn. Let's see. Does it get better? I haven't watched the whole thing. Oh, it keeps the sugar cooler. Oh. Got some FM here. ボードオンにすると、鍵盤についてしまいます。オフにすると、この時の音程がずっと全部に聞いてくれる。This not FM, sorry. Yeah. A synth punk, the Behringer boy. Yeah, he so he returned the Nord lead A1 after like what a day. Um, I warned him, dude. I warned him a lot. Uh, let's see, synth punk. Uh, let's see. Boy, he's got a lot. Oh, um, where is it? I'm gonna correct him on a couple things. Norley A1 going back to Guitar Center mildly. See, yeah, he does he does play it. Oh yeah, he returns it. Wait, it's not the Nord, it's Omnisphere. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, why is he, why is he playing? Okay. <laughs> well. Um, this, so he doesn't really play it on stream that much. Here, Nord lead A1 percussive patch. Percussive pad. Come on. Going for human league sound. Yeah, I mean, that sounds okay, but uh, let's see. Norley A1 is digital. Dude, how long did he have it for? Not that long. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I sound really good, don't I? <laughs> Anyways, so the magic happens right here. It's true. And I figured out, without using the manual, I figured out how to uh, get in between each sound. And see, here's the thing. This is the thing about the Nord. The Nord is only strong. It's only as strong as it's the telephone preset. So 
you know, preset A, preset B, C, and D. Now, this particular patch has two sounds layered uh and i don't think he should have gotten the a1 that's what the point i'm trying to make here i think he should have gotten the four or a 2x or even the three because the a1 as i've said before it has a very cluttered interface and i think it doesn't doesn't uh promote creativity and and and, and sound design and I could be off on that, but I, I've I've looked into it, and it's just like this thing kind of is just so smushed, you know, it's so smushed together. But anyway, so this this was when he returned it. Uh, the videos, Nord League A one going back to guitar center, mildly disappointed with some. It was a good learning lesson. Getting the Nord lead A one was a really good learning lesson, and I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there are some things about it that are cool, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it sounds thinner than Omnisphere. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, I think again, you have to. I don't know. It's it, Omnisphere is great. Well, I don't like it that much. Omnisphere is whatever. But um, I don't think it sounds thinner. I think he got confused. I think what he's trying to say is that it sounds more bland than Omnisphere. And that I understand. Because from my experience so far, owning a couple of these things, well, the same model actually, but they don't sound that character, full of intense character. You know what I mean? Like... It's not going to sound like a memory Moog at all. And even this thing has a Moog filter emulation, but come on. It won't sound even close. Um, it's, it's not going to sound like a Jupiter 8, you know? The closest thing it does sound to is the Prophet 5. Actually, the Nordlead 2, I guess they got permission from... Uh, Dave Smith or something to use. They have all the original Prophet 5 presets inside of the Nord Lead 2. Um, really good recreation of that sense. So that's the closest thing it sounds like. But there, it, it is definitely a mild, mild-mannered Clark Kent synth. So the reason why I like that is because, and I've said this a hundred times, but because... It fits really well in a mix, super well. For example, if we pull up FL Studio, I have the MIDI channels routed to uh, different channels. We got, oh my God, sorry about that. Well, I think, I think this bass is so fat. Uh, can we turn it up somehow? Let's see. Is that as loud as it goes, really? Huh. Let me turn it up in uh, the channel in FL. It's going to clip, whatever. It's fine. I just want you to hear it. Um. Do, do, da, da, do, do, do. So we got a little bass line here. Can you even hear this? I'm sorry, you can't even hear this, huh? Oh, you can. I mean, so that's a smooth bass line. Very smooth. Right? Let's go to the patch two. Um, no. uh, but we'll make this sound better. Right now it sounds very harsh. You know.
Let's hear this. This is all coming from the Nord, by the way, just so you know. Um, but so these sounds are fitting pretty well together so far, you know. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's these and, and it's so fast. I mean, cause you have every patch right there. Um, how about let's change this to. Bum, 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 bum. Let's do that. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I'm getting caught up in this. So I don't think this sounds like a thin VST and I, maybe I'm biased, right? I could totally accept that. Um, how about let's do another, it's getting a little cluttered with this MIDI. I know I normally give them each their own MIDI pattern, but I was just lazy. Here, let's go to pattern two. How was that? Yeah, you know. Let's go down. You know, something like this. And the thing is, again, these, this is all, all of these sounds are coming out of the same synth at the same time. So it just makes composing really fun. So I, I don't think he used it properly. I think he was just kind of like, it doesn't sound analog. And he returned it. And I told him, I don't think you should have done the A1. I think you should have gone with something else. I warned him, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's not for everybody. I, I understand. I think for some people, these are maybe sound boring. Again, for me, it just works really well, really well for my sound. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Welcome in good music. Uh, Gladick says, thoughts on the Access Virus TI. So I actually own the Virus A, the first one. And at, I think I've said this already on stream, but at the time, I didn't really understand what, first of all, what I was even doing, what it could do. And I got lost in the, I don't like these 90s trance presets. So I eventually sold it. Kind of stupid. I know. Um, now that I, I know a lot more about synthesis, I actually would, wouldn't mind going back. Although I do remember the interface being kind of, eh, not my favorite. Um, in Good Music says, actually the Nord Lead 1 sounds very much like the JP8 in terms of tone. The Prophet Type 5 tone cannot be recreated on a digital synth because of... Okay, well, I'm just letting you know that they did recreate the presets. Here, I'll show you. Nord Lead to Prophet 5. I mean, it's up to you whether they did a good job or not, but they did recreate them. Um, for example, here we go. Sequential Circuits Profit 5. One of the first fully programmable polyphonic analog synths make its debut on the market in 78. The Profit 5 is a true classic. Okay. 
what is wait nsmp what the fuck oh okay yeah so yeah these are the these are the patches i guess um i don't know i'm not the biggest sysx guy loading patches and stuff um and other other people have mentioned this too like jorb was talking about how the nord lead 2 at least uh has a lot of relationship to the profit 5 um here we go profit 5 patches we can probably hear it. We can hear a sound demo or something. Um, I heard that there's a bank of private five patches in one of the banks of the two X. Yeah. How, <clears throat> how authentic are the P five patches on the Nord? Can the Nord actually recreate any of all? Uh, okay. Does the Nord lead have the same parameter <coughs> in particular, the poly mod? No. Okay. This person says Nord lead isn't model after a P five. Okay. It's a unique musical edgy tone. So don't. Okay. Oh, and that's it for that thread. Well, other people have talked about it. I don't know. Um, yeah, here's Jorb's video. Yeah, like, the thing is, I don't think of this as a 90s synth. You know? Like, okay, the JP-8000, yes. JP-8000 is super 90s. Um, but I don't know. They've Nord doesn't really have that sound for me. Wow, look, look at the paint is totally chipped on that thing. Damn. Why is it so quiet? Is it quiet for you guys? It's super quiet for me. I guess the sound's coming up. What the? Hold on a second. Guys, why is it so quiet? It's so quiet. What the hell is going on? Let me Let me check something here. That cannot be right. <laughs> Were synths cool in 1997? Okay. Too bad I was... Bro, you better... Jorb, you better pump up your fucking volume. <laughs> I really, really think so. Okay, I don't even want to watch this now because it's so quiet. That is... That's freaking me out a little bit. Okay. Here we go. 16 Voice Profit 5. Um... Let's see. Hello, my name's Jorb. Much Color better. Gear. Uh, I'm not Jorb, I was about to call the police and have you arrested for how quiet your video was, but it's a lot better now. Not good at these talking parts yet. Bear with me. <laughs> and this title is about as close to clickbait as I'm comfortable with, so I'm not going to make you wait to find out what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Nord Lead 2, uh, 1997, made by Clavia, 16 voices, four parts multi-timbral, uh, and one aspect I don't talk about in a recent video where I generalized what it is and what it can do is the fact that its architecture is close enough to the Prophet 5 that you can replicate more or less every patch. Some of the yeah. high resonant stuff doesn't work so well in VA, but for the most part, you can get um, incredibly convincing versions of them. Yeah, that, that's going to be how the Nord since our 90s is that is that the res when you crank up the resonance, it does sound very fucking digital. I'll show you right now. I mean, it sounds insane, you know. Uh, here, let's do this. Uh, let's uh, watch your ears, folks. I mean, that's, that's bad. But I think if you kind of ignore, or like don't go too far on the resonance of the synth, you should be fine. It sounds nowhere near. The Prophet 5 sounds almost like an acoustic instrument. I don't... I don't know. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration, but fair enough. Um, it's an analog polysynth. It's not, you know, the sword and the stone, right? It's not, we, we shouldn't be too, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's the word? I was going to say sacrificial. That's not it. Um, we shouldn't treat the prophet like it's an actual prophet. You know, it's not Muhammad. Um, but, uh, 
Yeah. But no, I mean, dude, like they, they literally have, they literally have made the patches. Like the sync ones, the ones you all know. Now, is it going to, if you played it back to back with the Prophet 5, no, I'm sure it wouldn't sound exactly the same. But it comes close. That's what they're saying. All the same patches. And so, Clavia oh, includes 45 oh, my chest. sets from the factory on the synth already. No, you don't have to do any programming. You just have to get to them. Uh, so, let's listen to one just to prove that. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm saying. It's the sync patch. I'm sure you're familiar. That's from Release the Beast by Breakwater, sampled by Daft Punk on Robot Rock. I'm very mm -hmm. convinced by that. Uh, that sound, to me, is more than close enough to work for my needs. Uh, and the Nordly 2 will cost less than $1,000. And... You already have a lot and to of be fair, his, his okay. The title of this video is a little clickbaity. He's acting, but but I, I know what he's saying. I, I know what he means. It's not. He's not saying it will replace the profit. He's saying it can get close. Top five sounds there. So uh, I hope that's of interest to you. Uh, I'm not going to talk for the rest of this video. Oh. I'm going to um, just show some patches and list the patch number on the Nord and the patch number uh, that it translates to on the Prophet 5. I won't do them all. I'll do the ones that I liked or that stood out or were interesting. Uh, and that's Jorb, it. I need you to get a louder microphone. Come on. <sighs> oh, you know what I like about this lead? I have the 2X. This is the lead 2. It looks like the patches have letters and numbers. That's kind of cool. This Nordlead 2X just has numbers. And I don't know. I, I kind of forget where the hell I am. Anyway, yeah. So I, I just think like... And was that an amazing song I just made? Not really. You can just do so much with this one. I haven't recorded any. That's that's what, what's so fun about this. I haven't recorded anything yet. There's no over. That, that's all live. I'm not playing it live. But you know what I mean? Like it's all sequenced live. Other sounds too. Let's see. Oops. There we go. This is more of Alpha Juno style bass patch that I made. Now clicky envelope, I should fix that. There we go. This is a very basic patch. This is a oscillator one is a square. Oscillator two is a saw. It's an octave up. And that's it. It's a Juno. Juno style. Um We can make a giant bass if we wanted to. Let's see. Because we got that. Let's go to patch two. Let's go down. Ah, uh, kind of harsh. Uh, turn it down a little bit. I don't like that patch so much. Let's see. <sighs> um, the original, okay, use the chip. Alpha Juno envelopes are the original sluggish, ruggish bones. Dude. The Alpha Juno, the only reason why I like it more than the JX8P are the envelopes. 
Because again, envelopes on the JX8P are so fucking slow, dude. So slow. Because it's meant for strings and shit like that. But you compare that to an Alpha Juno, it might not be as snappy sounding as a Juno 60 or whatever. But I'm telling you, there it's way faster than the JX8P. Now they have the same filter. They have the exact same filter chip, I guess. But the envelopes are better. So bass lines on the Alpha Juno are way easier to make. Um, they're more fun, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, the JX8P, it's, it's hard, man, because... I don't know. I, I see what they were trying to do. I, I just don't think it worked that well. Now, there's mods you can get, though. You can get the... Um, Kiwi 8P, where it you can change the envelopes and all this stuff. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. It, the thing with mods, the only mod I got on my I got the uh, MIDI mod for the JX3P, which um, which uh was necessary. It was purely just to make it so I could play a sequence and control the knobs in real time. You couldn't do that. The MIDI spec was very bad on the JX3P. But I think once you start getting into mods that like change the entire foundation of the synth, it's kind of like, well, okay, what's the point? Welcome country fair. Uh, I forgot what you said cause you deleted it. That's fine. Uh, I guess the seven stages give you more versatility. Are there any mods for the alpha Juno? Ah, uh, good question. I think I actually asked, you know, the guy who makes those retroactive, um, Pant controllers. Retroactive JX8P. Uh, so he, um, the company's called Retro Retroactive. And yeah, he makes these controllers that you, I had it where it, it's actually, it was soldered into the keyboard. It's pretty sick. Unfortunately, the Alpha Juno, the space on the keyboard, there's no space for that. I guess it, it would mess with the with the PCB or whatever the hell you know it 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 would you can't do it. There's empty space there. That's why you can do it there, but you can't for the Alpha Juno. Um, but as far as mods, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Alpha, Alpha Juno mods. Uh, the best must do juno mod is to replace the almost roland proprietary power inlet with a standard c14 inlet okay um whoa whoa what the hell what is this dude did they that's crazy did he just make a rack out of <laughs> photo for a diy for replacing a broken key on the Alpha juno one juno two if all else fails, wow. That's insane. I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like anything too crazy. Yeah. Um, there is a mod for the JX3P where you can change the resonance uh or something the the filter resonance or you can also do like a stereo adjustment thing i don't fucking know um yeah okay um sorry guys i'm kind of losing it let me drink some coffee i forgot i have coffee Uh, let's see. It's county fair, by the way, not country fair. Sorry. That's your evil twin. You just deleted your message again. I was about to read it. All right. Oh, wait. Behringer sued Dave Smith and 20 anonymous users. Your space forum for libel. Uli lost. Ha, ha, ha. Your message stayed. Um, cool. Good. Uh, suing people for libel. It's such a fucking petty, stupid thing, in my opinion. Thanks for looking. Yeah, no problem. Oh, did the stream go down? 
Uh oh, stream is being weird. <sighs> um, yeah, I yeah, you know, I you know what? If the Juno X had also included the Alpha Juno, I might have got it. <laughs> I missed that thing, dude. If the Juno X included the Alpha Juno, I might have got it. Cause I'm I'm you know. I don't know. I love the Alpha Juno. I really, I'm surprised. Yeah, with the Jupiter Six and the Alpha Juno, I'm surprised they haven't, uh, they haven't taken advantage of those. Uh oh, I see the stream is like, whatever. It's it's doing the spinning circle. Uh oh. Uh oh, spaghetti yo. Yeah, man. Uh, what's this? I have a Juno one. I love it. What's this? What the fuck is this? Oh. Okay, I don't want to hear this. Okay. <laughs> that was awful. Um, okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, so nothing too crazy, no crazy mods or anything. Um But yeah, man, I don't know. I just think overall Trigon 6, I was a little hard on it at first. I'm more into it now, I think. Um I don't think I'll be buying it anytime soon. I'd have to save up a lot. That's a lot of money, bro. What are there any other synths on the horizon besides the Profit Pro 800? Which, dude, I was saying this on my walking streams, but I was going to get the Pro 800 when it was announced back in 1975. No, back in, you know, two years ago. But they took too long. I ended up getting a Profit 6. I was like, wow, this is awesome. And now the idea of buying a Behringer Pro 600 clone is just like, who cares? You know, you took way too long. Way too long. Uh, hurry up. Synthesizer. I'm just going to literally Google synthesizer. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, RIP to Herbert. I don't know how to say his last name. Herbert Douche. I hope Deutsch, Deutsch, Herbert Deutsch, co-creator of the Moog synthesizer, dies at 90. Damn. What a life. 90. It's fantastic. Uh, Hell yeah, dude. But no, is there any other news, uh, upcoming synths? Nah, I don't. Mostly been Trigon 6 news. Uh, Synthesizer news. Excuse me. Um... Let's check out Music Radar Synths. Uh, Hudson Mohawk reveals some of his favorite tra synths. Uh, he leans toward the Prophet. Hmm. You know, I would be kind of... You know what? It's so funny. I was watching Micro Korg videos the other day. It is such a shame that they didn't make a... Actually hands-on micro core because you can get some cool sounds out of that thing really cool sounds um but they just have the worst interface and then they made the micro Korg xl which is even worse <laughs> like they removed even more knobs crazy oh okay dreadbox i released some reissues erebus and hades Oh, yes. Dreadbox, the Greek company. Is there more to this story? What, is, are these both monosynths? I think they are. Synth classics. Hmm. Uh, two monophonic analog synthesizers. Interesting. Yeah. They're an interesting company. I was looking into one of their four voice polyphonic synths, but it was super expensive. Wow, look at this cool jacket. Look at this guy. 
Can someone confirm the number of filter types the Trigon 6 has? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, boy, my internet's getting funky. What the hell? Trigon 6 filter types. Okay, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, okay, switchable two and four pole resonant filter. Okay. Cool. Two pole and four pole. All right. Nice. Um, so oh my God. Um, how are you with uh, with synth developing? Because I what? met together together last. September at Superbook for the Nymphers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, um, how are you happy with the feedback from customers? Up? So we are, we are doing very well and people are happy. And uh, you did a, a, a lot of feedback, uh, you did a lot of uh, firmware updates. I saw. Uh, uh, it was just one major update mm -hmm. uh, with MPE, uh, polyphonic aftertouch, and other mm -hmm. good things is, like that. Is there uh, some. Uh, okay, let's move on. <laughs> So fascinating for you as a developer for creating such. Is this a video on synths or a video on cool jackets? Is there. Okay, here we go. Oh. Dreadbox first look DFAM style analog groove box synthesizer. Uh, okay. Shown uh, uh, box, although the box won't be available in the DIY kit. It's here just to present, to be clear on that. So it will be either a Eurac or. A standalone machine because we we give stands for the unit. What is what? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this video is. What's going on here? Why do we need to see them looking at the synth? Um, Interesting. And it's actually yes, a groove box. So you have the synth voice here and the sequencer from here. Uh, it has a 32 step sequencer and in each step you can store three Let's different hear it. parameters. Can we hear it? Step, so it spits. Velocity and accent per step for hits. Nice. Nice kick drum machine. Yeah, this is not for me. Show up of what, what what's happening here. And this yeah. engine is uh, an analog, analog engine, yeah. Yeah, it's full a analog. full analog and engine. It's okay, that's enough of that. Um, is this Ben Jordan's brother? <laughs> hey guys, it's me, Ben Jordan. What, what did I say to you? I was telling you. Uh, what did I say about Ben Jordan? Let me read what I said. Something really stupid. Uh. uh <laughs> I'm Ben Jordan. Wait, wait, let's see here. Search Ben. I got I got to read this. This is one of my funniest comments I've ever made. Uh <laughs> I bet if you walked this isn't it, but I bet if you walked up on Ben Jordan and yelled Trump, he would collapse into a neurodivergent puddle of tears. <laughs> That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Damn it. I don't know where it is. Yeah, jump to message. Where's the one where I... S Where's the one where I said he, he goes to the hood? Uh... Wait, 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 wait. Let's see. It's worth it. It's worth this is this petty thing is worth it. Um fuck. Where was it? Uh I don't see it anymore. Damn. Shit. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I basically said, what if Ben Jordan goes to the hood and they're all making beats in FL and he says 
try this on for size and play some math rock. <laughs> Stupid. Hey, fellas, dig this. He just goes insane. He plays some really pretentious math rock 718 uh, time signature in E minor. Ben Jordan is, is funny because he's such a nerd. He's, he's, he's the fucking guy who he's not, he's not harmful, you know, like he's not mean or anything. Uh, yeah, he makes some good videos, but his FL studio video was so funny to me because it's like, he's showing you what you can do in FL, which is cool, but it's also like, none of this is practical stuff. It's all like just the most insane you can control a drum sequencer with an envelope generator that's routed to the filter. It's like, bro, <laughs> you know, like, like, hold on a second. I understand that you're, that you're seeing the matrix code, you know, and you're in that. That's cool. I'm happy for you, but let's, let's dial it down a little bit. You know, it'd be like, it'd be like, learn. it'd be like, you know, we're all cavemen. And then he's like whipping out like a vape or something and doing crazy uh tornado swirls and we're just like whoa <sighs> he's funny um you know i don't have a lot more to say and i do kind of want to clean up this candy cane that i shattered on the floor like a man child so that might be it for today i think uh yeah i mean it's let's see yeah we went for an hour 30 minutes pretty good pretty good uh thank you all for coming Mr. Adamski, uh, thank you for your input. County Fair, uh, Cuneo 300, the 300th Cuneo clone. Uh, Glad Exatic, who else was here? JS Bach dropped in. Synth Artist 69, Maxi, you guys rule. I might just do a Saturday synth stuff, you know, Saturday synth stream. Why not? You know, if I'm not busy. Yeah, these are these are laid back, these are chill. Uh I like this. So I will be I will return. Kiko One will return in the sequel. Uh I'll tell you what, let's let's just end on a really obnoxious uh thing.